Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about square root decomposition. Now imagine that you have an array a1, a2, a3, so until the end. And there are q number of queries. The queries are of two types. One of the queries is that find out the sum of the elements in the range L to R. That's obvious, range sum queries. The other query is point update. Given an index and a new integer, set the value of ai equal to x. So given index i, change the value of ai to x. So that would be point update. Now we would like to solve these kind of queries. We know that if this point update was not there and only one type of query were there, uh, l comma r, then we can solve this problem in n plus q as we saw in the range, uh, prefix arrays video. But we want to do, we want to be more efficient of course. So a cool guy once had an idea that, okay, this array a, what I'll do is, I'll break it. I'll decompose this array into smaller arrays. So I'll have, these arrays and what I'll do is I'll break this big array into x small arrays. So from one array I'll get x number of smaller arrays and in each of these arrays I will maintain exactly y elements. No one knows why he did that but turns out this is beautiful. So he concluded that okay then x into y should be equal to n. We'll care about this later but for now just Imagine that it is possible to break your big array A of n elements into x smaller arrays, call this chunk 1, chunk 2, so until chunk x. And each of these smaller chunks have exactly y elements. So chunk 1 has the first y elements of a big array A, these first y elements. Chunk 2 has the second y elements and the exit chunk has the last y elements of from a big array A. Okay, so this guy broke down the big array into these smaller chunks. Now what he thought was, okay, now I have this big array as smaller chunks, so I don't need the big array anymore. I can in fact just forget about it, discard it, delete it, whatever. Okay, so this big array is no longer needed, but for, you know, good presentation, I'll just keep it here. It looks good that the page is filled. Now, what he did was, for these chunks, he calculated the sum of these chunks beforehand. So whatever is the sum of the elements in C1, he calculated the sum, call it S1. The sum of the second Y elements, he calculated that, call it S2. And so until, for all the chunks, he calculated the sum of the elements inside that chunk. So for these Y elements, whatever is the sum, he calculated it and stored it here, S of X, right? So now he has these chunks and, and he also has the sum of the entire chunk for every chunk. Now he thought about, okay, what if someone gave me a point update query? How am I going to solve that? So if there was a point update query, say update the ith index to some value capital X or no, let's say update the ith index to some value V. What he'll do is he'll locate, hey, I lies in which chunk? Let's say that i lies in maybe the kth chunk. So he'll go to the kth chunk, he'll find out which element this i actually relates to. That's simple mathematics, he can do that. So he'll just find out the chunk where this value lies. And he found it okay. Chunk k is the guy where the update needs to happen. And he finds out the exact element at which the update happens. He changes that element here he updates this value, whatever it was previously, to v. He also updates the new sum. He find, finds out, so previously the sum of the elements, all these elements of the kth chunk was equal to sk. Now the sum gets updated, so he just iterates over the chunk again and finds out the new updated sum, that's sk dash. So he's able to perform these queries in what time? So he'll just need to chain this element, that would be big of 1, and then iterate over these elements again, since there are y elements in this chunk, so it's going to take him big O of y time to, to do the update. And actually it's possible to do this update in big O of 1 time, to find out this sk dash. It's possible, I want you to try that on your own, but the guy wanted to actually keep the technique very very generic, so he's thought, I'll do one thing, for this kth chunk, after updating the value in big O of 1 time, I'll simply iterate over all the elements, find out the new sk dash 
and that will take me big of my time. That's okay. We'll see what y is. But for now, it's taking the update is taking m big of y time. Now he started thinking about how will I answer the queries. Answering is another important part. So for a query l comma r, he thought first he'll find out in which chunk does l lie. Maybe the ith chunk. Okay. And then I'll find out in which chunk does R lie, maybe the jth chunk. So this would be the ith chunk, ci, then ci plus 1, so until the jth chunk. He knows that, hey, capital L lies somewhere here in this chunk and capital R lies somewhere here in this chunk. And these are all chunks in between ci and cj. In a brute force manner, what he would have to do is iterate starting from here all the way up till here, find out the sum of all these elements in between an L and R, and that would be the range sum query for L comma R. That would be the answer. But he's smart. What he'll do now is instead of actually iterating over these chunks, the individual elements of these internal chunks, these chunks are totally within the query range L comma R, right? So Instead of actually iterating over these elements inside this chunk ci plus 1, you will simply take whatever is the sum ci, si plus 1 here. That is good. He will take the sum si plus 2 of the chunk ci plus 2. And so on till he will take the sum of the elements of the chunk cji minus 1, that is sji minus 1. He would take all these sums and add it to his answer because these are included in the answer. Now he is just left with some elements of chunk i and sum of elements of chunk j. If he is able to find out the sum of these elements and add them to the answer, he has the sum, he has the answer to the query L comma R. So for these elements, he thought, okay, I'll just iterate over these elements starting from the lth index till the last element in the ith chunk, I'll iterate over here. And for this jth chunk, what I'll do is starting from the first element of the jth chunk, I'll simply iterate till I reach this element that is the rth element and lies in the jth chunk. He'll find out the sum of these elements by iterating and these also by iterating. So this way of answering the query, let's see what's the time complexity for that. So here's what he needs to do. For all the internal chunks, there can be at most x chunks, in fact x minus 2. But let's take it x because we are going to talk asymptotically. So they can be at most x internal chunks because the total number of chunks is x. So you will just need to iterate over the sums for these chunks. So that would take him big of x time because those sums are already pre-calculated for him. So that takes him big of x time for iterating over the internal chunks lying in the range L comma R. And for the external two chunks, he will have to iterate over these elements here. This can be in the worst case y elements. Same way for this chunk. The number of elements that he'll iterate is going to be in the worst case y because every chunk has at most y elements. So if you think about it, the query is costing him big O of x plus y time. So he was like, okay, I can answer a query in big O of x plus y time and I can make a point of rate in big O of y time. Now all he needs to do is find out what is the right value of x and y so that it minimizes the cost for him. So he said, okay, my cost is x plus y for answering the query. And then what should I set x and y equal to so that the cost is minimized? He knows that, hey, n, the size of the array is actually equal to x into y. So what he did was, he was a mathematician, he was smart. He said, okay, cost equal to x plus y. And since x into y is n, I can find out x in terms of y, that is n by y. And I'll just change this. I'll just replace it here, substitute it here. So that would be n by y plus y is the cost. And then he said, let me differentiate this cost with respect to y, with respect to the number of elements inside a chunk. And he find, found out this is equal to 1 minus n over y squared. And then by putting dc by dy equal to 0, he finds out the minimum cost at what y is the cost minimum. He puts dc by dy equal to 0 and then he gets n by y squared equal to 1 which gives him y equal to root n. So the cost is minimum when the number of elements inside a chunk is exactly equal to root n 
which makes the number of which makes x equal to also root n. So he found out that hey, the query cost became, becomes x uh, x plus y that is big of root n, and the update cost also becomes big of y that is root n. That's good. That's pretty good. Now we can answer all the queries in q root n time. Previously it was q into n. This is a big improvement. And why is this called square root decomposition? Because he is decomposing the array into smaller chunks. And he found out that the cost was minimized when he broke the big array into exactly root 10 number of chunks. Each having exactly root 10 number of elements. So guys, I hope you liked the explanation, you enjoyed it. Make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. In the next video, I'll try to bring out some code. Till then, you can try uh, writing code for this on your own. Put it in the comments, I'll pin it. And yeah, till then, bye.